Our next case is 2016-08. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, ultimately moving kind of southwest of our former request. This is a request for a single family plan development. There's 36 single family dwellings that are proposed. This is going to be similar uh, with a similar developer and development group than that was developed on Glen Laurel to the north of Old Pine. Ultimately, the request uh, was for approval with one condition. The site plan was the same site plan we gave you last Monday. The condition was the one that we spoke about with fire rescue regarding the distances between the houses. And ultimately, fire rescue and the developer compromised on a condition that relates to the location of the fences and the side yards. Um, I don't think fire is 100% satisfied with that, but I think that they will live with that until they can find some additional grounds or background to come up with um, some support for their concerns about how close the houses are built and some of the fire concerns they have. Ultimately, that's what the recommendation was, was approval with the one condition from fire rescue regarding the side yard fencing requirements. The developer is, is, um, is acceptable, is, is in agreement with the proposed condition. Obviously, he's developed with um, five foot side yards before and has had some success with them. So at this point, we bring you a compromise with that condition. I'll be happy to entertain any questions you might have. The only other update that I cannot give you as of yet is this case does have a variance that is pending. The ZBOA is scheduled to meet that next Tuesday regarding the location of the subject property off of Mulligan Road. Um, the short story on that is Mulligan is currently classified in our books as a local road, even though the engineer, traffic-wise, would say it's more of a collector. We've said you need to be at least on a collector road to be uh, requesting for PD zoning, so we feel like, honest, I feel like that will be successful, but that public hearing has not been held yet. Ultimately, that's the updates I have for you, and really the biggest update being the compromise with fire rescue that we spoke about. Any questions for staff? Any requests? Chris Wilson? If I may indulge again, I wasn't here at the work session. What was the situation with the fire? Um, ultimately, fire rescue had a concern with the setbacks that are proposed, which are five feet minimums. Their concerns were number one, if you develop a house as close together as you can, that's 10 feet between structures. You put in an AC unit in there, they have trouble laddering those houses with setbacks like that, especially if there's a fence. The second concern was when the houses are so close, there's an increased risk for that fire to spread from structure to structure because they're, they're just closer. So um, anytime you go within about 10 feet of fire rescue and inspections, really start to pay attention to how the building is constructed. So ultimately, fire rescue believe they can compromise, put a setback, um, or excuse me, a side yard fencing requirement in there to mitigate that and to continue to do homework on if there's any documented grounds for how close structures can be for fire spreading from How is the, the side fence going to get the fire? Look like it'd be an avenue to jump from one to the other. Well, by not requiring those side guard fences, if they do have to ladder that structure, they can just they no, more fire. That's right. Uh, okay. I'm so, sorry. So now, just clarification, Eric, are you saying that they can no longer go from the, from the, the further through corner out? They can go from the further through corner back? Is that what you're saying? That's right. So there'd be a it could possibly be a 10-foot gap all the way down the lot lines? No. The, the aim of the condition is to say you cannot have a, you cannot construct a, a fence on the property line in between those structures. Which could potentially be in the middle of the 10-foot. Isn't that the same thing as a side yard fence? I mean, five foot? It is. It is. I mean, and the intent is to give them more space between those houses so that if they do need to ladder that structure, they have an ample room to do that. What they're trying to avoid is you have a structure and you have a five feet of space, a fence, five feet of space, and then another structure. Because then you, they have trouble laddering up against the fence to get onto the roof. To but you understand that none of those houses are have equal back. So you may have a fence here and another fence that's 18 to 20 feet behind. Yes, sir. I understand. Where if you have a different length of a house, you might have a slight side yard based on where your neighbor's house is. Yes. We, we tried to make the language so that you could have a fence that extends from the rear of your house. I'll have to ask them about how they would deal with the situation where the house is a different line. So just for clarification, there's no issue at the further, most rear part of the, of the structure going to the proper line sure. and going back. That's right. We tried You to just don't want them to proceed any closer than the rear corner. Is that what you're saying? That is correct. 
That is correct. They wanted to let them have a rear yard, but not a side yard. And how we did this, we were successful doing this in the neighbor, well, the neighborhoods to the north. And that's ultimately the compromise they agreed on was no side yard fences, but you could have, you know, a rear yard fence. And we tried to make that clear in the condition to say no side yard fences. However, you can start that at the corner of the house going towards the rear. I just want to make sure it's clear to me. Mm -hmm. It seems that there are two sets of setbacks currently. So the, the houses that are facing Mullingham Road, they have eight foot setback side setbacks. Mm -hmm. So does that rule apply to those houses as well? We only try to make it apply when those structures are within 20 feet of each other. The ones that are within five foot? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So currently there are two types of uh, side setbacks, five foot, eight foot. The ones that have five feet setbacks, side setbacks, will not be permitted to have a fence on the side property line. That's right. Okay. Uh, but that doesn't apply to the ones with the eight foot. Well, if you, if you utilize the eight foot to its maximum, which means you have eight feet fence and eight feet, then that would be within that 20 feet buffer that fire says we'd like at least 20 feet of clearance. So this condition would apply so to those houses. Apply. So 20 feet is what they are looking for. Yes, it, would, it could apply to those 8 feet if they, if they go right up to the edge of that. Okay. It would be there. But there is the, the rear setback is, I think, I can, from what I could see on the drawing, is 25 feet. Yeah. There's no concern there. No, ma'am. The, the no. front is 35 or something like that. Yes, we're, front and rear are not a concern. It's just what we've learned from interacting with them and the developers. When you get within 20 feet, fire rescue starts to have a concern and really they don't have a concern if there's not a fence there there's plenty of open space but if they start to fence those property lines it really cuts down the amount of usable space that they can use to fight a fire or ladder a structure on the side yard and i know you got back with me in regards to the rear loading alley as you called it yes ma'am so there is no issue with having all these driveways directly off mulligan for these residential properties Right now, I think it's the engineer's preference that they wouldn't be there, but if you take the property right now and do not develop the subdivision, but cut it up into what they're typically allowing, they could have five lots. So I think the engineer looked at, okay, it's suitable for them to have five, which is what they propose. So he believed that a compromise there was reasonable, and so he did. When there are six. The lot on the corner next to the southern entrance will actually have a driveway off of the interior drive. Okay. I agree, I said the same thing to him, but he, he is going to propose that driveway to be facing the interior drive, not mowing. That's a valid criticism. Um, ultimately, ideally, you would have a PD that does provide for that mixture of uses from a planning standpoint. One of the weaknesses of the zoning that we currently have in the county is when you have a developer that wants to do more affordable housing, if you go below 10,000 square feet, there's really two options. One is to request a variance to the lot size, which we don't typically lift up. The other one is to do something that's site specific. So for us, you know, there's a weakness in our ordinance to say, if you want to do an affordable housing product like this, that's your choice. Um, if you go to a point where you could say, okay, well, we're not going to accept your PD development unless you start mixing those uses, you could take that stance. I think it's, you know, in my opinion, fairly harsh. We just haven't gone that far to say you have to mix the uses to qualify for PD. We've said you can do residential PD. And ultimately, the housing product that we've done, if you look to the north, um, the denser developments providing the amenities they do with the parks and the community centers, I feel like when you compare that to the developments of 10, 15 years ago, um, I think that's an advantage you know, that the county can offer as a PD. Some of the amenities that we make you provide when you give us that, when you want that additional density, I think it's a good thing. Well, if it's based on what they have, I probably will guess they'll put in um, a pavilion and a playground. 
um, they haven't depicted that, but based on previous experience with a developer, I believe they'll do that. And he may be able to respond to that, but based on his experience, I believe he'll put in a playground and a gazebo, uh, not a gazebo, but that type of pavilion, covered pavilion type of stuff. I mean, wouldn't, that want, wouldn't that be something we want to require you know, as, a, as a part of this at this point, rather than just sending it to the county and hoping they do it later? I mean, you can, it, commissioners, if you want to clarify what type of amenities that they will provide in that central green space area, it's certainly within your authority to do that. The only thing that staff felt like, based on previous experience, we should be qualifying and putting in there is the parking spaces. We've had some discussion with developers in the past about how many spaces to provide, so I want to be clear about that. But, you know, based on the location of the green space, I do anticipate amenities. Sometimes developers want to wait until they have homeowners in there and they can figure out what they'll provide, but if you'll wait just a few minutes, the developer may may have some comments on that. Yeah. Mr. This actually leads into my question. With the, what's required as far as green space? Mm -hmm. uh, the minimum requirements for uh, PD is 15% green space. 5% of that has to be a recreational type, and then 10% can be just general open green space. Um, we allow you to use 25% uh, of that for detention, up to 25%. And we've, you know, based on our calculations, this developer meets or exceeds that. And we actually, uh, recreation-wise, he exceeds it. He exceeds that 5% threshold because of that central, well, central park. But that's what... The then that leads me into the plan mentions here where there is um, four guest spaces, including one handicapped space, the parking that leads to that green. It notes in there, um, it's basically, it says something, accessibility to future community yes, uh, facilities, which goes to your question about well, how much of that is actually going to be developed. Mm -hmm. And how do we control, or how do we know what's going to happen we, in that space? We normally use our, um, one of our conditions we've had success with that's on the site plan is when there's something encountered that we don't know how to handle, we refer back to R10 standards. So R10 standards allow for community facilities and passive parks that are appropriate for subdivision type areas. So that's the protection that we build in on that site plan to say if some issue comes up, we put that background in there in case there's something we don't think about, but it gives us a place to test it against. If it doesn't meet our 10 standards, then what we can do is, well, that's a PD amendment. Or you can take us to the ZBA for some kind of interpretation issue. But ultimately, that's kind of our safeguard with that condition. And that has helped us in multiple occasions not only avoid an excessive public hearing, but also offer some protection um, to staff because we just aren't able to think of every scenario that we should before it's actually developed. So that's why we put that condition in there, and that condition would control what can go on in that green space area. Yes. Was the parking going in that little area in the middle? Too? Yes. Yes, sir. Well, there's going to be a whole lot of green space left. Well, how we put that much parking for all these cars? That's just, it's for all just these four, cars. just five spaces. Mm -hmm. One of the total spaces? Yeah. The little tiny thing down at the bottom. Oh, okay. One good. handle oh, cap, one side walking, three parking spaces. Yep. On other developments, they've required, um, we've negotiated for two spaces. That seems to have worked. We felt like four was at least appropriate here because of the potential space you could use there. Um, it's a fairly large park. It's a very nice, you know, very, we feel like a very nice, usable park. Mr. Ray. Yeah, I was just looking at the standard for plan development and that was previously mentioned. This looks more like it's just to put more houses on a smaller space. Mm -hmm. But if one of the, and it says shall be architecturally and environmentally innovative. What What's innovative architecturally? I, I, I see nothing on here that, about the houses that makes them unique. Innovative, other than they're just close together. If I can address that, Jason, sure. I think a lot of that's been covered in with some of the stuff that that the contractor used as far as 
a horizontal and a vertical application, mixing brick and stone and stuff like that, mixing all kinds of different architectural items to make a pleasing, a pleasing sign. I didn't see in the package where they had spelled that out that they were going to be unique, different, or something. I mean, I, I don't doubt that, Chairman, sure, but you know, the whole point of the PD is to come to us with that plan. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's nothing here. You know, this looks like to me like Nelson Hill, which mm -hmm. all it has is a big hole in the middle of the water, you know, and, and as many houses as possible to be on the plane. You know, there's not, I mean, when you're coming with a PD, that requires, to me, more thought on the front end mm -hmm. than maybe we'll do this on the back end. Just my personal opinion. That was my opinion on the PD, too. Yeah. 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 That's what the standard says. I, I would say, and I, and I, and I know what both of you are saying, but I, I know both of those items, and it may need to be attached, I'm not sure, but I know that the covenants that they are giving as they purchase lots and draw them down, get a specified in there, but I don't think it needs to be attached somewhere. Huh? I mean, Christians, I respect the fact that you think this needs to be maybe a better looking site plan, but the, the hurdle we have to remember is if you want to do affordable housing, which is housing lots that are under 10,000 square feet, this is your avenue. I mean, it, we, we have an extra step, an extra set of control where if you in an unincorporated area are going to do affordable housing, we want to see what it looks like, and and that's where we that's where we are. I mean, I respect the fact that you want to raise the bar, but so far, honestly, based on the affordable housing products that were done 15 to 20 years ago and the ones we've done the last five years, the bar has been raised. You know, to go further than that, I respect that, but if you look at the difference between the two products, this is a nicer development and nicer developments are being done than they were under you know under previous regulations. So I think we have taken some positive steps to provide a newer, nicer product with more amenities than was being done in the past. Well that would be all true if they were just asking for a variance for lot size. What they're asking for is a PD, and we have standards for a PD, and we're saying, well, we're not going by those standards. What standards are we not going by? Well, we, which we, section? Well, I, I don't, I don't know what, what, uh, what's unique. What, what, what the house is going to look like? Are they different? Or, and it says shall have the following characteristics, and, and, and you go through there and read it, and it says allow and design developments that are architecturally, environmentally innovative and achieve more utilization. I see nothing about that. Accommodate uses which are compatible both internally and externally. Uh, you know, and then it goes on to protection. Now they do have a green space, mm -hmm. but. There's nothing designated in the green space that would guarantee that. No, it says I mean, you, I mean, we just fold out there and let them do what they want to. No, it says a little bit different than the arboring system in the city of Alabama. <laughs> if I could address those concerns, and I do appreciate each and everyone bringing those up, but uh, in, in, in our city county, uh, we really don't have first time homeowner houses. We don't. Everything, our things are maxed out both inside and outside. I, I've been fortunate enough to go to other cities and do uh, be on boards that judge houses, and some of them be upwards to five and six hundred thousand dollars that do not have the amenities that these houses will have, both inside and out. So I, I, I and I appreciate Mr. Rector's concern. But I don't know going forward that the architectural interest on the outside is that much of a factor because I know those guys are going to sell them and they're going to make them all just as pretty as possible. But I guess with all due respect, what we're talking about is not the fact of what they're going to do. It's the fact that we're trying to fit a square peg in a round hole with certain requirements. And we're not having any of those requirements met. We're going on the fact that they say they, they do do the same. What what the problem is is the county does not have a specific zoning classification for what's going on. So we're trying to put that in here and ignore all the requirements for this classification. 
mean, that's what's happening. Maybe it's happened before, but that's it. J Jason, I'm going to this question. Mean, the, the three phases, I'm wrong, the three phases of Glen Laurel and Barrington, what was the, were they the PD zoning or what were they? Yep. They were PD zoning and R10 zoning. And, I mean, commissioners, we can go through, I would like to understand what you're calling requirements that we're not meeting. Well, here, here, Jason. 4.060 standards for plan development. B objectives. The plan development district shall have the following characteristics. Mm -hmm. Six of them. Okay. I don't see where one of those is specifically dealt with in this proposal. So you you want us to en enforce the objectives as something? Well, I don't. I mean, I don't. If we're going to, if we're going to have this, then we should either enforce it or we should have a specific zoning category that deals with 6,000 square foot lots. But Commissioner, they they have open space. They have a sense of place. They do not have a mixture of uses. Well, of where is the sense of place dealt with in this application? That you put before us, Commissioner. If you drive, I'm to, to, tell you, if you drive to Glen Laurel, I'm not talking about Glen Laurel. I'm talking about this application you put before us. Where is the sense of place dealt with in this application? With that street, with those houses, and with that little green space that these people are in, and call their own community. That's what I consider a sense of place. place. here says allow the design clubs that are architecturally and environmentally innovative and that achieve more efficient utilization of land than is possible through application of conventional zoning standards. So where does it address that they are architecturally and environmentally innovative in this proposal? How else would you develop this, this shape land with this number of houses? That's not architecturally and environmentally innovative. Well, but you're, this is the environment that you've been getting. A developer says, Jason, this is the property that I want to develop. So what's the architecture going to do? I think based on previous experience with this developer, they'll mix the facade, the house That's the issue. Them. It's not in the application. You're going on previous experience of yours, and we're, we're, you're wanting us to approve something just based on they've done it like this in the past. Commissioner, I could very well condition this to say, I want to see all of your architectural facades and standards, but I just, I think there's a point where we can over condition something and it becomes not, um, not healthy. Well then we should and have a But I've been there before. I've, I've been to the point of requiring architectural facades and get to the point where you regulate, you know, with conditions, this is what you can and cannot build. And ultimately, you have the authority to put a condition on there, but right now, I don't believe as staff it's worth it to require that level of, of condition. I mean, I will say, I'm not in favor of regulation. I'll know that I've spoken against it numerous times in here. But if we're going to enforce and try to apply the zoning standards that are in place, then we need to enforce and apply. We don't need to go on, well, they may do this, or they've done this in the past, or they've done it somewhere else. This calls for us to have data about what they are going to do, and it, that data is not in this application. Commissioner Paulson, and, and if I will, I just I'll say one more thing. I'll address that. Is that this this subdivision? I believe it is when we classify an affordable home, and like you said, Commissioner Paulson, this regulation we get regulated to death. Other we got other things that start in the next few days going to increase the price of a house and. And at some at some point, if every house got to be architecturally designed and submitted, somebody gets the fees got to be paid. So it sometimes it just keeps escalating to a point that becomes not affordable anymore. I understand, but I do understand what you're saying, sir. I do. And, and, and if we have a zoning classification that provides between five and ten thousand square foot lots, just like R10 does, mm -hmm. then I don't care what what's out there if they meet all those classifications. But if we try to fit that within plan development, then I care what the standards are for plan development. That's the point I'm trying to make here. Mm -hmm. We're trying to fit this in something that it doesn't fit, just because we don't have a classification for it. I would love to have affordable housing. I'd love to have it in the appropriate zoning classification, but we don't have that classification. So if we're going to have it, then we either need to create a classification, or we don't need to try to stick it somewhere that doesn't fit. Any more discussion amongst commissioners? For staff on this request. Mm -hmm. There be none. Is there anyone here wishing to speak in favor of this request? Please come forward at this time. Anyone here wishing to speak in favor of this request? 
Anyone here wishing to speak against this request, please go forward this time. My name is Gretchen Quarterman. I live at 6565 Portman Road. Um, I hadn't planned to speak about this, but um, I don't want to see us have another blue pool or Nelson Hill. And Nelson Hill was a PD that turned into the ugliest thing that there ever was. And um, I don't know, blue pool might be the second ugliest thing that there ever was. And what does it mean to be affordable? Who's going to live here? How much are these houses going to cost? Um, we have a huge, huge amount of rentals available already in pretty nice houses that are available for rent. So how is this adding something special to our community? And that, is that green space in people's backyards? Ever been to Hamilton Circle where the snakes are? Everybody there complains there's snakes in that beautiful green space that they can't get to that's behind their houses? So I, I think some more work needs to be done here. Thank you. Well, I have a question for you. What about Nelson Hill is ugly? Oh God, everything. It was, it was supposed to be. I mean, are the houses ugly? Yes, they are. They're close together. So they're close they're together. Pretty, they're pretty uniform. The, hot, the cars are parked willy-nilly crazy out there. It was a beautiful swamp. All the trees are cut down. The water flows over, over towards the road. There's grown-up green grass. doesn't have a tree out there. It's ugly. Any questions for the presenter? Thank you. Anyone else here wishing to speak against this request, please come forward. There being none, I will close this part of the meeting. Commissioner, do we need to have any additional discussion? Or can we have a motion on this request? One question actually, Jason. Um, the, <clears throat> the future development map designates this area as suburban area. Yes, ma'am. In a suburban area, what would typically be the size of a residential lot? Probably our most common size we've seen in suburban area is 10,000 square feet. I'll take a no more discussion. I'll open for a motion on this request. Mr. Chairman, <coughs> yes, sir. Everything we've said tonight about we don't see where this is a planned development. This is a cookie cut approach to get more um, houses on, on a, a small area. Uh, we don't know what they're going to look like. We don't know what's in the green space. Green space is okay. They can put whatever they want to in there. But uh, as it stands right now, I'm not comfortable with it, the way it says. I make a motion we deny it. Recommend denial to the commissioner. Second. So we have a motion and a second. Do we have any discussion on this? Deny, you know, if, if this uh, case is denied, that means that it can't, and it's approved as a denial, and it can't uh, be brought forward for a year. Correct. So, I mean, why don't we move to table this and see if we can get some of this information in detail that's desired next month, rather than deny it and then have the situation if it goes forward and uh, is actually uh, denied. By the, uh, I don't have a problem with that, and I thought about that during the time we were talking. And in my opinion, the person that's presenting this should have been interested enough to come before us and and give us some information. Now that's my opinion. If they're not interested enough to come up and stand at that podium right there and answer some of the questions, then they're not interested. You know, just I'm not changing my motion right now. 
Okay, that should have been thought about before we got to this point. Okay, so we have a motion on the floor of denial by Commissioner Willis. We have a second, Commissioner Folsom. All those in favor of the stated option, please say top or raise your right hand. All opposed to the stated option, signify the reading raise your right hand. Apparently we're at 3-3. Three, three. So with that being said, I also oppose the motion. Okay, so at this point we need another new we need a motion. Another motion. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that we recommend tabling this request to give the um, party who is interested in having this uh, work performed an opportunity to come forth with the detail that has been discussed tonight. Maybe for next month, maybe table it for one month. Okay, we still have a motion on table from Commissioner Wiles to table this for a 30-day 30 30-day 30 window to let the developer come forward with the needed information to, at this time, satisfy all the commissioners' concerns. Do we have a second on that? Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor of the motion and the second signify by raising your right hand. Six zero on that approved, Ms. Carmel. Thank you, commissioners, for all your work on that.